Now we'll take a look at getting and deserializing a JSON document from Couchbase. The getting part is actually quite straightforward. You get it by ID, but then you transform it as you need. So it's important to look at how many ways JSON data might be represented within an application. Now, of course, it could be represented as a simple string, a raw Java string. This is commonly the format that you're going to receive if JSON is posted, for example, from a browser or other API. Now, within Couchbase itself, the Couchbase API has the notion of a JSON object, which takes that string and then reformats it in what you could think of as a JSON-specific map to make it easier to manipulate in code. However, that format itself is then commonly wrapped in what is called a JSON document, which derives from the base document class. This is the canonical representation of JSON within the Couchbase SDK, and its API is consistent across all of our SDKs. This has the JSON object within it, but it also contains the metadata related to that JSON. And of course, you may also have other representations of data within your application. You may have POJOs, entity objects that, for other reasons and purposes within your app, hold data that then needs to be serialized and deserialized from the native state of your application into JSON for interchange purposes. So how do you do this? How do you convert among JSON representations? Well, if you need to serialize a JSON string to a plain Java object, to a POJO, or the reverse, well, there's many ways to do it. In our SDK, we embed the Jackson DataBind package, which has the object mapper class that can handle this for you. But there's many other choices. There's also JSON, a whole library supported by Google, exactly for this purpose. Within the application, we've included both of these libraries. However, for ease of use here in this course, we've abstracted them into a JSON converter class that is specific to the lab application that simplifies all of this with from JSON and to JSON methods. You could go in and configure under the hood which one of these you prefer to use. So what about the rest of the conversions? So what if you need to take a JSON string and turn it into a Couchbase specific JSON object to make it easy to manipulate, or the reverse? Well, that's where our transcoder class comes in. The transcoder, which is part of our SDK, has a string to JSON object method and a JSON object to string method. Although there's another way to get the JSON string back out of a JSON object, it's Java, just called a two string method. It's well written in that manner. So what about the JSON document class? Now it's the document that you're going to be handing off to Couchbase. It includes the necessary metadata. So you can create a JSON document from a JSON object or the reverse. The JSON document class is of course part of our SDK and it includes a create method, a factory method for taking a JSON object and assigning it metadata such as its document ID. If you need to reverse the process and extract a JSON object back out of a JSON document, just call the content method of a JSON document and you get back the JSON object. And of course, stringing this all together, if you wanted to get back to the raw string, you would then call the toString method on the JSON object. Of course, as you explore the API in the docs, you'll see variations on all of the above. So how do you go about reading a document from the bucket? Well, the Couchbase bucket class implements the bucket interface, which has several variations, as you can imagine, this is Java, of a method called get. At core, this retrieves a document, meaning something that derives from the document class, very commonly a JSON document, by its key as stored in Couchbase. You can pass to this method either a string containing the document ID, the key, or another document, in which case the key embedded in the metadata of that document would be used for the get operation. It's going to return to you a document, very commonly a JSON document, or null if that document is not actually available. And it throws a Couchbase exception. We'll look at exceptions a bit more in a moment. So it might look like something as simple as this. A find by ID method declares a JSON document and then through the bucket, you pass some string ID value, and that's going to return either null or 
the JSON document. If something goes wrong, a Couchbase exception could be caught and thrown. Of course, that JSON document might need to be transcoded in some fashion, so you might be passing it off to some converter method, like as you see here from JSON document. There's other ways to do all of this, of course. Alternatives that you'd find in the SDK include get and lock, which means get the document and then change its CAS in order to enforce optimistic locking. We'll be looking at that more later in this course. There's also get and touch, which means get a document and then update its time to live value. We don't explore time to live directly here, but those are documents which are set to automatically expire at the end of their time to live, unless of course you touch it and update that TTL. There's also get from replica. If you are storing replicas of documents in Couchbase, you can specifically request to get a replica rather than the base document. You also have the option to use the new nickel query API. You could execute a select statement in order to retrieve this document. We'll be looking at this in a later lab. So when would a get throw an exception? Well, the key operational exception would be a timeout exception. As we saw in the prior slide, you could pass a timeout to an individual Git operation. We also saw in an earlier lesson that you could pass in an environment variable as the cluster itself is created in order to set a default timeout for all these operations. There are other exceptions that could be thrown as well. Um, if there's back pressure within the system or a request is canceled or some other temporary failure reported by the server or perhaps Couchbase is out of memory or some other general exception. You can look in the documentation for more detail on all of these. An important note though is that in our SDK, the exceptions are unchecked. So if you want to fly without a net, you can. We don't recommend it, but it is possible. In our labs, we'll go ahead and encourage you to just write the code and see it working. You don't need to write in all of your try-catch blocks. You'll find, though, that in the lab final version of the code, we do catch and handle exceptions. So let's go in and take a look at what you're going to do in the upcoming lab. Lab 4 will have you get, serialize, deserialize, and return JSON from Couchbase. Let's go take a look. So here in the application, I'll take a quick look at the final version, although you'll ultimately be working up here in Lab 4 if you complete the exercise yourself. But you're going to start down the road of modifying the find by ID method. Now in this particular lab, you're going to use a simple get. In a later lab, you'll be using a query. You'll see code for both approaches represented here. But also what we ask you to do in this particular lab is to begin exploring the serialization and deserialization methods that are pre-built for you in the Couchbase repository class. We don't have you directly write the serialization and deserialization code, but we provide models of how you would approach this for you to consider. So it will walk you through some consideration of this code in the lab for both from JSON document and to JSON document. So go ahead and jump to lab four in your workbook. Go to lab four here in the code and get the hands-on practice with all of this that's going to help cement your understanding of how our SDK works. When you're done with lab four, we hope you come back for lesson five.